John Dickerson on Arizona's political history. Arizona should not be up for grabs. And Arizona is up for grabs because there's something happening in Arizona that's actually happening in the larger country, which is that the electorate is becoming more diverse. A third of the voters in Arizona are Latino. And it's changing fast. Maricopa County is about 60% of the state's population. 300 people a day are moving in there. It's the fastest growing county in America. Maricopa County is the largest county that Trump won the last election. And so this is the center of Trumpville in Arizona. We talked to one couple, Yasser Sanchez and Emily Romney Sanchez. Romney, familiar name. She's a very distant cousin of Mitt Romney. They live in Maricopa County. They live in this crucial county and they consider themselves conservatives. They have in their front yard an Arizona Republicans for Biden uh, sign. Donald Trump is not right for America. Joe Biden is the right candidate. We need it. Our country needs it. We need to heal. We need to move on from this failed experiment. The fact that you would have Arizona Republicans for any Democrat in that section and in their neighborhood in particular uh, is notable. And this is not just any old Republican Party. The Republican Party of Arizona has, in the history of the Republican Party, played a signature role. Two of the party's nominees had come from Arizona, Barry Goldwater in 1964 and John McCain in 2008. The Republican Party in Arizona has as its sort of founding father, if you will, Barry Goldwater, the senator. The philosophy of something for nothing, the cult of individual and government irresponsibility, is an insidious cancer that will destroy us as a people. He was constantly pushing back against the changes within American government and within the Republican Party. Uh, pushed back against Eisenhower, saying that basically his policies amounted to a dime store New Deal. So he was really the, the, the hard kernel at the center of conservatism, which said basically individual liberty, states' rights in opposition to a big blossoming federal government. If the working man were allowed to make more money and keep more of it, I think a lot of these problems of welfare would solve themselves. He famously said during the 1964 convention that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. He coined that expression and basically for a long time represented the idea of a no compromise conservative movement within the Republican Party. The other towering figure in the Arizona Republican Party is John McCain, who fashioned himself as a successor to Barry Goldwater. I don't work for a party. I don't work for a special interest. I don't work for myself. I work for you. He didn't actually come from Arizona. He was, like many people in Arizona today, from somewhere else. He married his wife, Cindy McCain, who was from Arizona, so that helped give him some local roots. We spoke with Cindy McCain in Phoenix. She has endorsed Joe Biden. Her argument is that the Republican Party is basically now all about whether you're for or against Donald Trump. What was it like for John McCain to run as a Republican in Arizona in 1982? Well, Arizona has, has always been very conservative, but in 82, it was really maybe a little more conservative. I'm, I'm, and I'm talking about the general state. John McCain hadn't been political before that, no. right? He had to choose. Could he have chosen to be anything but a Republican? No, no. His core values and his core beliefs and his view of economics, human rights and things like that made him a Republican. But because McCain was a deal maker and often at odds with his party, he came to uh, fill out a picture of the Republican Party in Arizona that had an independent streak. What does John McCain and the McCain family mean in Arizona? Service to country respect, willingness to put partisanship aside to get things done. Emily, what did it for you in terms of moving you away from the party's nominee, I mean, in a Republican area? I kept thinking, give him a chance, give him a chance. And then he said those things about um, Senator McCain. He's Senator a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. I really, really respect veterans. I respect all military personnel. I'm gone. You've lost me. So it was about character for you? Absolutely. Did you ever in your life imagine that you'd be supporting a Democrat, given that you are an Arizona Republican no. from birth, I mean? No, I, I, not really. You know, it, it's not about the party. It's about the person for me. And like I said, I'm going to remain a Republican. I'm not changing parties. 
I just think that our party right now is misguided. You're not leaving the party. You feel no. like the party's left you yeah. in Arizona. Yes. We met Dr. Kelly Ward, the chairwoman of Arizona's Republican Party. One of the tensions of the Republican Party, as you know, in Arizona, is you have some famous names, Cindy McCain, Jeff Flake. They say the party's left them. I would like them to tell me what policies the Republican Party has put into place or who has touted that they don't agree with. And I'd also like to know what policies that Biden and Harris have put on the table that they can't wait to uh, uphold and see put into place. That we would take a reporting trip to Arizona about this election is on the one hand surprising because it should be a Republican state given its history. But there has always been this tantalizing growth in Arizona, tantalizing for Democrats who thinks it might be moving into their category. Arizona may be a new swing state. It's what we'll do, figure out on election night. We'll learn on election night whether the new Republican Party in Arizona, Donald Trump's Republican Party in Arizona, can match up with that changing demography in Arizona and in fact be able to be a party of the future in a very competitive arena.